Hey and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be taking a look at a Nature's Gift Symbiosis Skoytal deck that I put together for 10.2 and I know the provisions don't quite line up because I'm recording this prior to the release of the patch. Great Oak is going to get a provision buff to 12 with a base power fixed to 9 and this deck is going to be really good I believe when the patch drops. So the games I'm going to record obviously are going to be tomorrow when the patch is effective and all that sort of thing but I can theory craft this because I have a lot of experience playing the archetype and I had a good refresher with hand buff symbiosis last season but for now we're just doing full blown symbiosis and I think the results of this deck will shock you it's actually very strong. Now to go through the deck list we have the great oak on deploy damage an enemy by the number of cards to the left of the great oak then boost self by the number of cards to the right of great oak so we can put this on the leftmost side to get the max amount of damage if we're looking to remove an eight you can put it to the rightmost side if we're looking to get the maximum boost or we can find the right spot in between let's say we want to move remove something that has four base power we could sort of just do the math so that there's at least left four cards to the left of it and we can just put this down and we get the damage and some boost and with symbiosis spawning so many treant tokens it just makes sense to have great oak in the deck and this is something that i've been looking forward to for a very long time but we just couldn't afford it great oak was a little bit too expensive the provision buff really helps him out and the base power buff justifies him even more and now we can finally play great oak now moving on to ethna young queen deploy spawn a young dryad in the row at the start of the round while in hand or deck transform we're going to try and wait till round three to play her ethne wrath of brock lawns to go to here so round three it's going to have veil and symbiosis so it's going to be Looking like that, spawning two of the young dryads in the row, giving us three units off the bat that are symbiosis tokens. This synergizes quite well because we're, we're going to be playing a lot of nature cards, and that's how we trigger symbiosis whenever we play nature cards. It spawns a wandering treant and boosts it by the amount of symbiosis tags we have. So here's three off the bat. We have the hammer dryads for the other two and abandoned girls transform into the young dryads as well so quite a few to really go with that combo and obviously this is going to help stack the row quite well for great oak as well if it's a short round so big difference there we have sim last fin and this is going to be pulling all copies of a bronze special card from our deck nine times out of ten i will be going for the bountiful harvest guys this is really important. We want to be able to get tons of points early on. We want to be able to recycle more Bountiful Harvests by creating sorceresses off the Bountiful Harvests and just kind of repeat the play over and over again, more or less. So that's kind of the go-to. But we might find ourselves needing some control with Nature's Rebuke so we can go and we can take out a couple engines in that event with this here. And Dryad's Caress is also a great option if we want to just go for the point slam routes and just really fast tempo on the board we can get a bunch of vitality going it plays spe specifically really well on the hammer dryads or keeping the young dryad tokens alive that we spawn off the ethne so take that in consideration as well forest protectors like an auto include for me in a deck like this because we can go ahead and we can play another copy of a bronze nature from our graveyard so assuming we've played any of these cards we have access to pull another one and we can use this based on what the situation wants us to do you know what i mean if we need to re remove another engine we can go and do that if we need just points we can go do that if we need to take a purify we can go and do that so there's plenty of options there with that we have some consistency cards here call of the forest is going to be playing a scoytel unit from our deck and boosting it by one so we can choose any unit of choice and play that from the deck it's a great tutor to have and this will help basically complete what we're missing here now we have another tutor with isengrim's council where we're able to look at a random dwarf dryad and elf in the deck play one of them and boost it by two so it gives us three options one of each we only have the one dwarf in the deck which is intentional because i want to be able to guarantee gourd off of the isengrim's council so that's why it's there but otherwise we have tons of good dryads and we have really good elves and i wanted to minimize the amount of elves we had in the deck because i wanted to be pulling either simlas or a sorceress so we narrowed it down to like the perfect example of what we want to get from this card so that's why the deck is built exactly the way it is here now Frigine is really good it wasn't in my former list but it's a card that I do like and with the base power increase recently it makes a lot of sense eight provisions very valuable here so we have the ability to get both of these effects because it's devotion so we're able to get the young dryad spawned 
and boost the dryad in our hand by two, which can help keep something alive. And I put in an extra couple dryads just so that we can't miss with this card. But it plays for a phenomenal value, stacks the row quite nicely for Great Oak and all that. Symbiosis tokens on the board, so makes a lot of sense. Dunka is going to be hand buffing. I think it's a really good proactive play for round one. We can go and try and boost cards in our hand like the Sorceresses and get them to six power so we can recycle more Bountiful Harvests and all types of stuff like that. You want to make sure that in round one you don't have Ethne in hand because when Ethne transforms she will lose the boost that you've accrued. So again, if you're pulling Dunka first round you want to tuck back Ethne because we can go and get her later. So that's pretty much it. My previous version had Fove in this range. I didn't think it was as necessary. With these two tutors and this then here, I felt like we could probably just be fine without using Fove in the deck here and go for the extra points with Frigionet. If you're finding that you're not pulling the cards that you're looking for, then I would probably recommend at that point to put Fove in this spot here and use it as a tutor for these. But I felt like with this here, this is probably going to be the most competitive version just because the amount of points we get from that little substitute there makes quite a difference. And the Gord's going to get the max value possible, right? We're going to be playing so many specials, even though it's not minimum units. Gord is going to be playing for the maximum boost that it can get being the 12 here because we have so many specials, so many ways to make specials and whatnot. So really good to have. I anticipate locks being important. In this meta, I think it's important to have a lock here. And I didn't go with the other lock for Scoytel, like I said, because I wanted to limit the amount of elves that we had in the deck, so I went with Morin instead. Morin is good because we also have the ability, if we don't have a lock that we need to use it on, we can just damage an enemy unit by two. And that's going to really help us go and get that extra reach for removal. You can imagine that Great Oak is good too, the rebukes and so forth. So I like Morin in this spot here. The Bountiful Harvest, create and play a Bronze Scoytel Elf, and then depending on the position of the chosen unit, boost the leftmost random or rightmost unit in your hand by two. So it creates three elves, and we get to choose whichever one's best for the situation. We can choose that, and then depending on where it's located of the three they give us, then it'll boost a certain card in hand. So you can really do a lot with that. Sorceress at Oblithena, create and play a Bronze Scoytel special card with provision cost equal or lower to this card's power. So, I see this card often misplayed. You want to make sure that you're you're sort of planning for it. If you're looking for a rebuke, this has to be at 5 when you use the order, right? If you're looking for a Bountiful Harvest, it's got to be at least 6. You know what I mean? You could still roll a rebuke off a 6 power Sorceress, but you know it has to at least be the number of the card you're looking to get. Otherwise, you're just going to be getting waylays, making a bombs, and um, dryads, caresses, and temperings, right? And that's fine too, but more than often you might be looking for something a bit more with the rebuke or the harvest. So keep that one in mind. The nature's rebuke, damage an enemy unit by 5, death blow boost, a random allied tree unit by 2. These cards play for phenomenal value because not only are we going to go and get that 5 point engine removal, we also have the 2 that we're going to be getting boosting on our side and then the symbiosis proc on everything that we have on the board so huge points like you can get 15 point rebukes in some cases it's pretty wild and the hammer dryads are really good round win conditions so they have symbiosis themselves at the end of your turn if this unit has vitality boosted by one so every time it's boosting at the end of the turn assuming it has vitality you're getting that two extra points per turn and these get crazy the amount of points you put on these is wild, and I try not to put them more than like 15 points because they might often see that heat wave, so you gotta be careful with that. But um, really nice to have, and the extra engine being symbiosis is really important as well. We talked about Caress, just helping fix the sorceresses on the Hamas, keeping the Young Dryad tokens alive and whatnot. They're just really good within this deck. The last version I played had Circle of Life, but I felt like tempering was more appropriate here because we need more nature tags in the deck. And we also want to have a bit higher tier cards in this range. So that's why Tempering's here, just to kind of bump some provisions down and make it playable. Again, boost by 5 at store to give it 2 armor. We don't really care as much about the armor. We care about the actual boost by 5 in the Symbiosis proc. And that should just be more than enough for the 4 provisions here. And Dryad Enchantress is really good for giving vitality to something, boosting up the base power, keeping it alive. And it's also an extra target in here for the Frisianae if we need to boost another Dryad in hand. 
and we're missing some of the other ones. So again, that's why we have the one-off Dryad Enchantress here. It's a pretty good card for the four provisions. And of course, Abandoned Girl. You can either do two of these and one of these or two of these and one of these, but I kind of like it the way it is here. These transform into Young Dryads, keeping their base power and then gain vitality equal to the number of Dryads in the row. So we have a lot of Dryads, guys. Especially with the Ethne and the Frisian and all that sort of stuff. Like, we'll be spawning like five, six Dryads in the row um, by the end of the round, right? So there's quite a bit. This is going to get quite a lot of vitality. And since these temple out so quickly, we actually have enough time to capitalize on the vitality that we get from the Abandoned Girl because, right, we're playing it early round. So this is the deck, and I'm really excited to play it for you guys here. I'll have a bunch of games with live commentary for reference, and I'll be posting the, the deck to playgwent.com so you guys can upvote that if you like it. And if you enjoy the content that you see today, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because I upload every single day. And right now, I'm going to be grinding to make sure that you have all the new decks necessary to have fun, be competitive, and just really enjoy the season for 10.2. So let's get into the games now. And if this is anything like my crime deck, I am terrified. I made a crime deck recently, and it was a lot of fun to play. Also very strong, so that's why I'm kind of worried. We've got some good options here. Probably tough back to Bountiful. Banning girls are a little bit slow. I don't think we need the Enchantress if we have everything else going on here. So, yeah, we want more specials. I will take Dunka, boost her up, and go from there, I think. So, my version runs a Heat Wave. And that might be something they might be looking to take out, if that's the case. Yeah, this is starting to look like it. <laughs> I mean, they play one card, but I'm getting excited. <laughs> okay. I shouldn't be excited, though. It's going to be a really tough match. We don't have the same level of control that they have, but we can answer the spenders. And that's the thing. I, I built... Yeah. I built something like this so I know how to play around it. Getting, um... If I take that out, then the Crown Splitter play gets kind of awkward. Because normally you'd want to take a round one Justice Thin, and, uh... If they don't Furco, it could be a problem. Burko Justice, we called it. Brawler. It's no problems just yet. I'm just finally starting to wake up. I was up since 4 in the morning. It's now 7.15. And uh, I put out my first deck guide. And wasn't overly thrilled with the way I played in that deck guide. So I'm really trying to buckle down here and play a bit better for this video. You know, I don't mind putting putting down one of my cards. I'm trying to avoid I'm trying to avoid playing Simlast just yet. I want to I want to kind of greet it out a little bit more. Taking the Philippa. Yeah, it's card for card, like what we're doing. So we got to respect that a little bit at this point. So let's get out. One thing I know is that once they've used the coin, it becomes increasingly difficult to get it back. Um, when you do a full bank spend like that with Philippa. So we'll just go and remove that. Play this here, and I think we should be fine with the Vitality. They might not respect the one. So we could probably just boost it up after. 
take a caress or something. Yeah. We're doing all right. I think that's the move. Um, we probably take the boost by five, though, with the tempering. Orbs, a little bit of carryover. I think that's my pass. It's going to be very difficult to bleed a deck like this because they have Cleaver. Take a look here, maybe take that back, take that back. Looks kind of good. Did we do an effective job? We did okay. Last save feels important to me. Um, Cleaver feels like a bad thing. Freshnay is going to get... We don't really get the carryover. I think I do go for the Basco for the long round. If I can lock the drill and just um, rebuke the... Oh, they have to play that on the pass. I guess they were thinking, okay, it's going to get rebuked anyways. That's one problem that's out of the way. And so far we're card for card, what I published a couple days ago. So... It feels pretty good. Um, Gord's accessible. I think we... That's a lot of points. We want more specials. We have good circulation here, but... Is it enough? Yeah, yeah, it's enough. We'll probably take a rebuke off for the protector, though. If they take tribute on the pig, that's not bad. Let's just start trying to get all this stuff down here. That's gonna have to be my lock, isn't it? Yeah, hands down. Freak Show probably comes down next. There's really nothing I can do about that. If we don't play a crime here, we can take it out, though. I'm thinking Great Oak. I know how tall it gets, right? It's going to get to like 15, well, 14 points, 16 points. Ah, they see the play. Guess that's fine. Get this online here. And we know what they're going to do with the Freak Show, so we'll go ahead and play that here.
This is tough. I put this down, it gets answered, right? Gets the coin back. That's a lot of removal. That's a lot of damage to come back from. I'm just banking on them playing like low cost cards like a second swindle and stuff that really fills up the bank to really cycle out that uh, freak show, so I have to really respect that. I'm worried about Heat Wave, but if they missed, you see what I mean? If they missed Heat Wave though, we might be okay. We'll find out shortly. Like it would be Heat Wave here if they had it, I think. Okay. There's really nothing that we care to remove. I think most points is still the rebuke. It's not impossible. It's probably the Gord next. Kind of nice to have that orb carryover that we're talking about. If it's Heat Wave, we're, we're done. However, if it's not Heat Wave, I think we win. Gord there. Ours is probably a bit better. Let's go. Good game. I'm so glad you played my deck. And so next up we have Skellige Onslaught. Hopefully we get a good round one hand here. So far, so good. Simlas into double bountifuls is accessible. We have. I don't really want to go too tall with it, but. Probably tuck this back sooner. Tuck back the brick. Gord's okay. I'd like to be able to have last say in this matchup here. I think that's pretty important. So we get this online first. Before, it's probably better. We'll rebuke it next turn. And pretty sure it is a sunset, so they're going to be a non devotion version, which is actually important. I don't think I care too much about that. We'll go ahead and take it out so we could start playing our engines here. Let's put down the couple. It's going to take some time to set up, but then with the sim last play, it's going to be like a huge swing. And if we stick with it long enough, I think that we're going to be all right because they're going to want to get out of the round probably before the sunset comes out of hand. So we just have to make sure by then we're doing all right. So it's probably going to be one and two. Three, four. Hopefully, we could stick in it like that long. Otherwise, it's not really ideal for them, I don't think. We'll just stay with the program here. Hopefully, they hit this one. That's too bad. Alright, it's one again. That's the problem with the matchup, right? But we see the time's coming where they're going to have to pass. Yeah. And we just need about 20 points. It's probably just that. Take a sim last then here, I think. Only one with 
We boost up the gourd, just pull what's on the right side. Yeah, pretty comfortable with that. It's going to be a tough long round three, but last say could make a difference there. And seeing the discard package come out and then Hammond is kind of a nice thing. We got more carry over here. I don't think I spent a whole lot. Probably ditch that. This is a, a sitting Morkvark target, so I might actually take the mulligan here. And I don't think that it's a matchup that I want to bleed in. We've got pretty much all we need. It's just about keeping these alive. That's the problem. But I think in this matchup specifically, we want to see if we can make it work. So maybe even giving them vitality or something could make it work. Mushy Truffle carryover. I keep forgetting it's, uh, it's non-dev. Yeah, Sunset's a big deal, but... We sort of play around if they're running heavy pirates, though, with our tokens. Helps keep board space as well. So Ethne is good to see. Dunka could be a pull, but I think Morin might be a pull as well. I think we have to keep things the way they are. It's looking pretty good. Now, I might try and go a bit wider with the points. I don't know if I'm going to be giving the Hamadryad Vitality. It's kind of annoying. I think it requires an answer regardless. So, that's what we'll do. And we want to lock it because otherwise they'll just bring it back, right? So, yeah, we'll take it here. It's ambitious to believe that um, Dunkle will last... Of course. We've got problems with this now. Um, what I'm worried about is if we kill it off, then they have the Kyusha, right? So it doesn't help us either way. I'm not going to be giving those vitality because they'll just kill them off anyways. Power really clutched it for them. I'm thinking that maybe they'll use leader charge. Take care of one of my other symbiosis and then we can start actually playing cards. It would be nice. what we'll do I think we still have to answer it that's the thing Do we have to worry about them getting bonded? Yeah, probably. Let's see what we pull off of this first. So 
so we'll just take that. Unfortunate. Let's try and roll again off of this one here. Okay, I don't mind this. I think we still stack ranged. A little bit closer than it seems. If I can pull off the other sorceress, we should be a bit more comfortable. Fakusha is pretty nasty though. Maybe they're looking for like a tall punish. I don't know. Good discard. So in the event that this gets damaged, how do we deal with that? Take Vitality with the Enchantress? Or should we just go Dunka first? I think we actually go here and we see how it goes. And depending on how this goes, we'll we'll figure out the next turn. But we want to use the Isengrim as soon as possible. Hopefully we keep it at six. Okay. So not much choice here. I think they have tall punish, but I also think we have to greed. May we wait a little bit longer. We have a leader charge after all. And we take a rebuke here. Don't think it really matters which one we play. Okay, Great Oak has to come down, <clears throat> down as soon as possible. We have <clears throat> three, six, seven, eight. I think we just play it for points, the most points possible at this point in the matchup. And we'll take the Vitality here. I'm feeling pretty good at this point. Morkvarg would suck, Heatwave would suck, it could be both. Okay, that's not all bad. Gord's actually pretty strong here. They're going to punish the Hamadryad for sure. Is it enough though? Yeah. I think we're okay. Yeah, the fact that it's boosted in hand made the difference here. We got it done. All right, we got Onslave coming up here. And are they five? Okay, they're five. That could be a bit of a problem, right? We'll put back that. I do fear that they're gonna just really butcher this card, but we can purify it, use it, and they might not expect it. So there's that. We want a bit of control in the rounds and we want to have let's see i don't think this ever like this will ever stay really let's try something like that so we can play dunga first if they use deploy we could just go ahead and rebuke that I 
think we can respect the lock here, take care of one of the engines, and then we can just rebuke the second one. I want to have some kind of dominance in the round, so that makes a big difference. Leader here is kind of nice. So it's Mill. Your attention, please. I shall now speak. Okay, I'm gonna take the rebuke on that first, and then I'm gonna take the dunk a second. For whatever reason, they're holding on to it, so it's kind of a nice thing to see. We follow method. Man, why do we gotta play against Mill? It's a really big rebuke, though. We'll try and get these sorceresses online. I think maybe the Hema first, though. The can be Time to get our hands. Yeah, we gotta get some points down. We gotta take the round here. Just play it for points. Chances are they're gonna lock it. We'll take a Purify off of it. Save the leader charge. I think that they go and they lock the sorceress at this point, so we'll just keep it the way it is here. into a joust is kind of nice actually we'll let the vitality kick in we'll just go and play this one here for now and next turn we can purify it I think that's the move regardless because we could take a waylay or something and that should just be fine or we can just wait okay good thing it's not a great card Bountiful is probably the most points, though. I think we actually just take this. It's too bad. Go ahead and take a rebuke, I think. And that keeps us up by one. Yeah, I'll go all in here if it means we can win. We have a pretty good deck still. That's fine. And we have them trapped, I believe. They play their last card, we could just drop Oak. It doesn't feel great, but it's something. Yeah, we'll just go take that. Gord's doing alright. Ethne is great. We still have targets for the Simlas. Okay. Probably going to be something like that. It's not great either. We did win on even after all. Torella, they might get something good. Ah, it's not that great. I wonder if we just go for the card advantage. Ah, uh, at this point we might as well just play. Heal and I unit by four makes a lot of sense.
they haven't really done a great job milling. I think it's just 2-0 anyways here. Yeah, I don't think they have it, even if it's like Letho or something. You should just be fine. Even if it's Vilgaforts. That'll do it. So next up, we got overwhelming hunger and this could be a problem pretty quickly because we don't have a lot of removal right but we'll see if we can just outpoint them gotta put back ethne and we want doubles for simlas now it's not ideal but i think we put back the rebuke or the tempering probably the tempering in this case just so we can try and secure something and I'm surprised that they don't have the other stratagem, but... Oh, it's one of these. Let's see what we can do here. Not really the pushing hand. It would have been nice if we had the Bountiful so we could pull off some last, but. We don't have any um, Dryads in hand either, right? So I think we do take a Sorceress because if we take it, then we're going to be getting, obviously. Maybe we can roll one first. I don't know if we're ever going to get through it, the defender, so I think we just take the counter here. Yeah. So looking back, could have clicked that real quick to get the extra point. I was thinking about floating it until just now as well, but we might as well just take it. They probably take a thunder off in anyways, which kind of distracts from the scribe. At least if we're coming into another round where they bring back this whole play, then we we have some good engines on the board. Yeah, they should have had the other stratagem for that play. I don't think we get much more of a, a turn here, but we'll try. So they've got the two, not the three. My phone just went off, scared me. <laughs> yeah, we gotta respect that tempo. That's too much to keep with, right? Now pulling these might actually be better than pulling temperings, right? So we can go Frisione into the Hamadryad, go from there. They'll be pulling back one, two, and three, which is actually pretty nice. Okay. 
There's that. So they'll get, yeah, one, two, and three back. I wish that I could just throw... It's going to have to be a rebuke, unfortunately, but it does play in for Gord. So we'll be getting back. The nice part about it, though, is that everything we've played so far has doomed. Except for these two. So they won't get back the full amount unless they start removing things from our side of the board. Gord's probably good. I think that's the hand. I'm just trying to get this circled out quickly. And you never know, maybe we can actually push back the defender with one of the sorks and then go and we can lock whatever's behind it. It might make a difference, but you see what I mean here? Looking at our graveyard, we've got the two units, so they'll bring back two. So it could just be one and two. They might not even get the defender either. I don't think we care about locking that. So we've got the four symbiosis out there. We'll go in for five and then we can go and pull whatever. Great Oak's going to be a great addition in this round. Like, the back row was already pretty stacked. We might go in for that pretty soon. We need to save row, like, room on the range row for the lock plus the Oak. I think that's going to be it, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we'll take a lock now. I'm kind of worried about board management here. So we'll get down all the symbiosis as quick as possible, and then we'll look for the best payoff first, right? So it would probably be like these two, I think. Maybe the, the protector, the oak. Three, four, five, six. We should probably try and get that oak down soon. So they don't have Sabbath yet, we can remove it at 7. Let's take Protector. Not 
That helps out quite a bit. We can go take uh, Rebuke off that after. It's too bad because <clears throat> three, six, seven, it's going to go to eight, right? this for now i think we put that there and we'll just go ahead and use the vitality while we have it i'm trying to roll maybe a uh, rebuke because i think that's going to make a difference so the other one's doomed okay that's not even that bad Yeah, we're pretty good here. So if I can roll Rebuke. I wasn't going to do it first, but I think we have to. We're not going to be able to play Simlas in this match, which is really unfortunate, but it doesn't matter. It would have had to just been Gord and that's it. So, um, but we did, we missed a point. We missed a point or two off of the, um, the not taking the rebuke after the tree. And next up we got Skellige. Reckless Flurry. This makes it kind of tough for cards like Dunka to stick. Go ahead and tuck that back. I think we want to put back Gord as well in round one. And Bountiful Harvest just in case we have to roll it. So I'm going to say that boosting Dunka is probably still the play. Although... Nah, like, I think we hold on to this, maybe even just boost that, because we don't have to necessarily play this. Well, if we put it with Vitality, it immediately puts it to 8, so then, yeah, okay, that's a bit better. Let's just see how far this takes us here. I would expect that they're going to put a little bit of pressure on us in this round. Or not. Um, we have a turn that we can sort of prepare. I think that we take a bit of a carryover play, and then we can start playing specials in around this one token that we have. I'd like to rebuke that while we have the chance. I think it's going to be a good target. Hopefully Coral doesn't snipe. Okay, that's not bad. Take care of this while we can. I think it's worth it. And then I just might take temperings and stuff like that. Okay, surely they're going to snipe on this one. For sure. I find it's one of the things where the game has so much tempo nowadays that it feels like in response to these types of plays, we have to go in with like our sim last type of play. So, and probably we'll do that sooner than later. Why should I, an elf, a sage, converse with an Just so that if we do get a pass, we can go and we can have that carry over. Take that one as well. And that's pretty good for board management. Now we can just play some temperings and stuff and just get really good trades off of it. I do kind of worry, though, that the cards in our hand are pretty boosted. Let's 
it's one of those things too that if we if we continue to play into this round i think even one more turn they'll probably pass on us so we have to plant, like find the perfect time to leave and i think if i could play two specials next turn then we might be able to get out of the round they might try and push it for that one last turn ah sure enough They're doing some kind of warrior's deck so far by the looks of it, with all we've seen. I'm surprised they didn't challenge a little bit more. Back to Temperings. I think that they're going to be the weakest cards here. Okay, what are we looking for exactly? Yeah, I think just putting those back. We don't want to get too tall. And maybe open with this because I'd like to see some leader charges or more Kvarg or something of that sort. You can also test to see if they're devotion or not. Sure enough, right? So what happens if I just plug that real quick? Do we get more Kvarg in exchange? Okay. We have some cards to help us escape if we need them. What happens if I just put that, flip it, take Protector, go into Bountiful? Is that even the play? Okay. Here, we take this. So it's two things that need an answer at the same time. They're going to want to take care of the Hamadryad, but they're also going to want to take care of the Whisper, right? So maybe they go in with the leader charges here and try to snipe it. If I'm going to pull... We definitely want to play specials. Probably just take a rebuke here. It's going to play for a lot of points. That was a good snipe. Twenty-seven, fourteen takes more Farg. If I go in for... I wonder if it's ever the Hamadryad or if it's something else. The lock's actually pretty good too. We could lock that. But I think we might have to dip out of the round at this point just because we have that vulnerable tall unit it's not really a good look yeah so i'm just gonna bank on the fact that maybe they missed the morph arc by now i don't know they're hovering over it it's probably the play morph varg and a leader does it i think Hmm. 
Nice bug. This is ambitious. Leader and Herald takes care of it. I don't even think we play it. This is the same problem though. still take that because they can remove one maybe but the leader might not actually hit everything they need to hit yeah good hits that helps us out quite a bit This card's not really something I'm happy about, though. At least we have more specials for Gord going around. That's too bad. We just gotta respect the process, play everything in order, otherwise it's gonna be bad for us. Flip that, take that, take that, and then play around this stuff. Talk about matchups, this is tough. Okay. Probably just take the vitality on the token. Holy. Control prevails, guys. I think it's too big of a deficit at this point, but I think if we go in for Gord first, that's the only chance we have. So we'll take it. And Oak just won't be enough to carry. Yeah, even with Junid playing for not a lot, like... Wait, what? So we had 43 points with the Vitality 44, they had 49, but we might actually win the game still. <laughs> I'm gonna let you guys stick around for this one just because I want to see if we actually get the free game. We would have lost by five points. Which I think is actually pretty good for the matchup. It was a lot closer than. Damn. <laughs> okay, so next one we got Frost here. We do go first. Probably tuck that back. Kind of like these in round one. 
I don't think a lock's going to be all that great, but if we mulligan the lock, they're probably going to play Aridin, so we have to kind of respect that a little bit. Um, healthy amount of specials, I think we keep. We'll just go ahead. And even if they push it back, it still works. Someone just commented on my YouTube saying they just played against me with the Crimes deck. That's awesome. Uh, I hope they don't mind me using this for the content. We'll go ahead and put this down here. And we'll go ahead and do that. And I kind of want to wait on doing anything with the hammer. We can take this out after. I think what we want to do is just go ahead and play that. There, I'm just replying to this here. That was a quick, easy round, eh? Gort's not saying a whole lot here, guys. We'll go ahead and put him back for now. I think we have to work a bit harder for it. And we'll go do that. So, there is consideration to go in for carry over here and see what they do. We'll stack this one just in case. At least it'll be kind of a card we want to keep for round three. So, Oberyn first turn is actually pretty nice. We don't necessarily have to play too deep into the round. I think something like the Enchantress is actually pretty good here. We can sort of weigh it out, see what they play this next turn. And Aridin comes down too. I think that's enough to kind of push me out here. And the leader. This Okay, they're pretty thirsty to get to rank uh, 2 here. And yeah, we'll pass. Going into round three. Gord still not doing a whole lot for us. It's surprising that we found a game where Gord isn't really doing much. We missed Ethne. We missed Simlas. We need to fix things here a little bit. I think. I think we go the. We go the Ethne route. Of course, we get Simlas. You know, that's fine. We pull these two. We keep this. I just wanted to ditch the Abandoned Girl first, just because I felt like it was a little bit slow in this matchup. We'll go for that. 
I don't know if we even care all too much about the gourd here. I think Ethne is going to play for more points in the long round. We'll stack the row, get the tree going. Right? Bleeding's not half bad. We take Sim last year, don't we? Really good value. There we go. And we've got the row stacked very nicely too for the tree. I might even want to take it a bit sooner than I thought because we play a couple more specials and we could row lock ourselves, you know, with the Morin as well. Okay, we'll take Morin on that, that's for certain. Yeah. I wasn't expecting vampires and frost. Take a lock. We just have to hope that they didn't put a purify in the deck. And then we can go and at least we free up some space. Simlas wasn't doing a whole lot at this point. Yeah. Okay. We gotta take care of that. We got six in the row, don't we? It's now or never. That's just too big of a deal. I love this card. <laughs> and we gotta play this before we run out of... What do they eat? They eat a tree? I sort of blinked and missed it. Okay, well let's get rid of this because that's getting kind of annoying. And then we can look at rolling out the Bountifuls and all that type of stuff. So far we're looking Devotion, right? We got this, this, yes. We'll get the most value I think if we go and take this here. Oops. It's close. This one should just be a win, I think. Yeah. Wing Hunger by Monsters. So we'll probably tuck away a Bountiful Harvest. We kind of want to pull these with the Simlas more than often. I'm surprised how many monsters are on the ladder today because I've been playing. <laughs> this will be the second deck guide I'm working on today, so. You gotta be careful that they don't take something like the uh, Manticore, so there's a consideration to sort of try and play around that. Probably just take that. We can boost up the. Hamma already goes tall. Maybe we boost up the Morn in this case. I feel a lot better if they take out one of the young dryads opposed to taking out... What is this? Are we into some monster mill territory? Um, we'll go put this down. Then we'll go put down the Hama, put the Vitality on, click this, and we should just be pretty good. Play a few specials. That's a really good consume off the Toad Prince. We can start putting some pressure on here, I think. So they go down with Han. I think that's what we want to see here. Simlas will put some pressure on them here. Bountiful. We go source every time. And I think we can go with the Seer here. 
I'm going to split up the rows a little bit just because I don't want to overswarm on the back row in case we do want to play Great Oak. So we could probably take um, a Caress off the Seer. I do think we go for the most points. I'm going to float the Sorceress because we could take Tempering on it. It's probably going to be better if we could do it that way. Okay. That's actually a pretty good lock. I don't want to give any sort of mind to it. Like, do we take more on the Harpy Egg? I mean, we could probably save it for a Weavis Incantation or a Detlaf or something. Yeah. Here, we'll just go for this. Rebuke's pretty good. We don't have a clean death blow unless they hit the four. I think it's still going to be the Rebuke though, right? For points. Yeah, that just keeps us ahead. Not really a whole lot in the way for a rebuke. I just here we'll we'll take something like that. I think I'd be willing to play these three cards if it meant winning the round. I don't know about the Great Oak though. I think it's kind of expensive to play here. Probably going to be a heat wave or something. Surprising. It looks like they're probably doing a rat swarm. Okay. Or some kind of glusty. I don't know if we care all that much here. We'll take this just because we can. Probably just that for points. Watch and, learn. and I don't really want to overswarm, so I'm not going to kill that off. We could just play Rebuke next turn, get some points, and probably just leave at that rate. Yeah, we're just good here. <laughs> Great Oak is wild here. Gord's already ready to go. Ethne's good enough to play in this round. We still have our tutors left. Okay, so we'll just see how far we can get. I think we actually just, uh, I think we go for it. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, we'll put this down first. Maruna would be unfortunate. And then we'll get Dunka online.
This is kind of nice. So I think we take a rebuke on this. And I think we take this here. Let's put it on something that's not too tall. That should just buy us some good time here. I'd like to get Dunka down next. She troll. Okay. Maybe we just take Great Oak. No, we just locked that for sure. It's kind of not what I wanted to do, but something. We're probably in pretty good shape to pass here even. What if we just play this for damage? That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, Gord's just good enough, I think. Nice. 